Welcome back to Is It Playable? In this video we'll be taking a look at whether The Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition is playable with Dolphin within Retroarch. I figured it was about time I moved, or included, GameCube tests, because I've been doing PS2 only tests for a while. And there's a decent chunk of GameCube games that I am curious about, in terms of whether they are, whether they are playable. But I figured, why not start with one of my most treasured games? which is the Collector's Edition, which includes a 20-minute demo for Wind Waker, the entirety of the first Legend of Zelda, the Legend of Zelda, or Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link, it's got the entirety of Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask. So it has a lot of different games. So, uh, warning, this is going to be long. <laughs> I figured why not do a test for all of these, just as why not? But I'll do... Probably do five minutes of each, and then just reset the game. Because you can do that, and it does seem to work with Dolphin. Whereas I know with PS2, that doesn't really work. I mean, it might not be five minutes, but we'll see. I'm also just incredibly curious how a demo disc works. Because I know this is very different. Ooh, boy. God, I remember playing this so much. Yeah, back in the day, before we even had Wind Waker, you get three choices. You want the dungeon, a stealth section, or the island. You can't get very far on either of them, but we'll do dungeon, because it's the most... probably the most intense... of all of them. Here we are! Oh, it's so weird. Yeah, even this is already completely open for us. Just strange. Okay, it's with right. Okay. Oh, nice. Do I get a key? I don't remember. Do I get a key? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I remember. What the game wants you to do is this. To be fair, the game actually works pretty damn well. And I have a feeling that how this game runs, like through the demo disc, or through the demo, is probably how the game actually works. Because I know uh, Wind Waker is a, it's not a stuttery mess, but it does have, it does stutter a fair bit. It's whenever you're loading a new area, basically. But now that it's loaded this, as you can see, it's mostly all there. I meant I actually got two OTT with term, in terms of testing. Because obviously I do I do want to do a test for each of the games. Just because, why not? Not many people will test the uh the collector's edition of Wind Waker. Uh, of Zelda, sorry. So why the heck not? Oh wait, is it still intact if I burn my ass? Oh no frame drops. You can burn your ass at full speed. Nice. Not bad. So that that'll do for this. I don't know how I'm gonna, you know, say if this is playable or not. Probably just see what they're all like and then just kind of go from there. I'll probably just say playable with issues, honestly, because I have a feeling quite a few of them are gonna be, not all over the place, but. I just have a few a uh, feeling that they're not going to be perfect, which, you know, understandable. It's like emulation within emulation, so I'm not expecting a huge amount. I'm also not sure if this is going to work. Sure. No, the fact that I keep doing, you know, re resetting, it should be fine. But we'll see. Register your name. Oh yeah, I forgot you have to press start. I, I, P. Oh yeah, I forgot. How do you do, how do you end it? Oh, I don't remember. Is it B? X, Y. Oh, there we go. Oh, register. There. God. Cool. <laughs> oh my god, it's actually... Okay. 
When you start to do layered emulation, it's never a good idea. The more layers to emulation you have, the more likely it is that something's gonna break. Or not work as intended. This seems pretty good though. I mean, at the end of the day, it's an NES game. Cause it's... It's gonna run. I was expecting it to be... laggier though, I will admit. Yay! Oh dear, I'm already nearly dead. Oh well. But as I said, this is like one of my... It's, it's weird to say, considering, but it probably is one of my favourite games. Of all time, just for the like memories I have with it. Because I spent so much time messing around in the Wind Waker dun dun uh, demo. Well, because we didn't have Wind Waker, and it was just something to play, and I was incredibly intrigued by everything. Ooh. Well, admit, trying to play this with an analog stick does not work very well. Well, surprisingly, uh, original Zelda is perfect. There we go, we died. It's fine. We start. Middle, little, little, little. And back to the menu. This will be where there's like there's only so many times you can reset before it just breaks. <laughs> Zelda 2. The Adventure of Link. How does this one work? Honestly, I'm more interested in um Oh boy. In how Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask work, to be honest. Just because they're N64 games. I know that the GameCube versions of those games is like it they're like the worst versions. Or at least in terms of Majora's Mask, it's like the worst version because it's prone to crashing and uh performance issues. But even still, it's it's just cool. And to be fair, the first time I ever experienced What? I can't remember what I'm doing. But the first time I ever experienced Majora's Mask was through the GameCube version. So, I'm... I'm glad it existed. Oh. <laughs> Hello! Yeah, just shoot. Oh god, the sprite limit. Yeah, if there's too much on screen, it'll just... kind of spaz out. This is also another game that's at full speed. This is weird. Again, they're NES games. I shouldn't be too surprised, but it... it's just weird. Well, I'm not used to... oops. Yeah, I'm not used to games being... Oh, like, um... I'm not used to layered emulation being so... decent, I guess. Normally it has a lot of issues. But I also don't mess around with layered emulation all that much. Just because I know the issues it can bring forth. Oh! Speeder! Oh no! Oh. What the hell? Oh, I was trying to hit you. Oh wow. Yeah, get owned! Hello. Wait, did I level up? I don't know if I leveled up. Ah, uh, this is one of those caves that you can't see anything in. Yeah, there we go, there's something in front of me. Oop. Oh, I made it! I'm safe! Oh. Oh. Oh, they're fairies! <laughs> ah, I thought there was a bee. That's what I thought they were. That'll do. This is also perfect. I'm so close to closing content, because I'm so used to it after a test, just to close content. Right, next up we have a very demanding game, compared to what we have played. So let's see. Watch this work better than the N64 Ocarina of Time through RetroArch. Wouldn't that be ironic? I have Rumble turned off in RetroArch. Mostly just because quite a lot of games... Whoa. 
we'll just constantly have the motors going, and yeah, no. It's not supposed to look like this. It's also at 16 FPS, which is not a good sign. Still 16 FPS for some reason. 11 FPS. 20. Mm. Oh, oh, it's speeding up. Initiate boot sequence. Ooh, I saw the pop in. That was pretty gross. Oh, it's weird. The, the FPS is at 20. Is that what the game ran at? This doesn't look like 20. Whatever. Hey, I ain't complaining. It's not a mess. Now we're at 30. Now we're at 60. Jesus is all over the spot. Ah, oh, damn. We, oh, we have to sit through a cutscene. Ah, eh, it's whatever. I said it would be long, so who cares. I may cut these out just because they do take a while. But in terms of this, I'll probably just get to the uh, Kokiri sword. It is weird that it keeps dropping to 20, though. But it's not like it's dropping to 20 because it's because of slowdown. It's still full speed. It's just what the game seems to be running it. Running it. I find very weird. <laughs> yeah, it's both. Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask have a fairly lengthy opening cutscene. But I'll admit, this works pretty decently. And I mean, if it is running at sl in slow motion, I can't really tell. Oh, now I can. For a second then, it was moving in like slow motion. I don't actually mind these cutscenes because it does actually give you a good sort of like benchmark. One thing I'm not sure about is whether the GameCube version of Ocarina of Time has all of the like effects intact, such as the fog in the, uh, the Kokiri Forest. I was going to say Deku Forest. <laughs> Nay, the world. Actually, the intro is not really that long. It's like a couple minutes. Oh. Oh. Yeah, to be fair, I can just use the cutscene in its entirety and then run to get the Kokiri Sword, and that'll do. In terms of Majora's Mask, probably run until you get turned into a Deku. And then that would be a good test for that one. Hello! Yeah, go away. I'm just keeping a close eye on the FPS count. I find it so weird that we're at 20. 2013. But I mean, it's not like... Ah, it's just weird. This just maybe was what the game ran at. Which I find very weird. Oh. <laughs> Something I never noticed before. I mean, there's some moments when I can tell that it's running slower. Because certain things look like they're in slow motion, but... For the most part, it's fine. Kinda weird. 
Ah, oh, wrong button. Whee! Ah. I mean, it's absolutely still in full speed, so... Oh, no. <gasps> oh, that scared me. I thought the game broke. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've just realised. I have the FPS counter to... S it updates every 60 second... Uh, every 60 FPS. Which, if this game is running at 20, that is every 3 seconds. So, yeah, that's weird. Never even thought about that. I'm now curious to see what Majora's Mask runs at. Whether that's also a 20 FPS type deal, or if that's different. We got the Kokiri Sword. You can borrow it for a while. I want to go kiss a rock. And I'll do it for the test. Mwah. There we go. That was pretty decent. Honestly. Run. It ran a lot slower than I expected, but it was still decent. And now we have Vendora Damask. Is this also a 20 FPS dealio? I think so. Yeah, the splash screen's a bit blocked, but it's fine. It just has, I think it just has the splash screen for the game as it loads it up. The only thing is, I could have sworn... Oh, maybe not. No, I think there was a separate release of Ocarina of Time on the GameCube, which had Ocarina of Time and, and Master Quest included. Whereas in the Collector's Edition, it was literally just Ocarina of Time. I mean, the Collector's Edition's an incredible, well, it... I don't know if I'd say the same now, but it was an incredible deal for what you got. You got like four fully fledged Zelda games for the price of like a regular game. It was really good. So that was at 60, the menu. But now we're in game. Yeah, it seems like it's another 20 FPS. All in all, I don't know what I'd say. Out of all of these, the only one that really had consistent issues was the Wind Waker demo. And even then it wasn't constant, it was whenever you went into a new room. So that's something I should have checked with Ocarina of Time, going to a new room. Well, I did do a transition from Link's house to Kokiri Forest and there was no noticeable dip, so... Yeah, I might not have to say that this is playable with issues, we'll just have to see how this goes. It's really hard to notice when there is an issue with the frame rate, if it doesn't have an audio crackle. Like, I noticed it with Ocarina of Time that it was... Like, it slowed down, but because the audio was intact and full speed, it, I didn't notice. As obviously. It's very foggy. Where is he? There he is. To be fair, the GameCube version of Majora's Mask might not actually be the worst version if you're playing it through emulation. I think it's just the worst version on a console because it was prone to freezing a lot. I never really had that many issues with it though, in all honesty. Not that I remember. And as I say, I played it a lot. I never made it very far on Majora's Mask, I always just dicked around a clock town because I, I had no idea what I was doing. So much so that I actually didn't think this was a full-fledged game on the disc. I thought it was just a demo because I never made any progress. And also it seemed like every area was like blocked off, so I just didn't know what to do. Mm. 
Actually, once we get in control, I'm very curious how the game performs. Because I have played this through, um, I think it's Moopin 64 Plus. Through uh, RetroArch. And the performance on that wasn't terrible, but it did have a few audio dips here and there in the intro segment, so I'm curious if this is going to be better. <laughs> It'll be very ironic if it is. Like the GameCube version, which is known as like the worst version of the game, works better than the N64 version. Bam, 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 bam. Hmm. It certainly seems better. Like, yeah, it had a dip, but it was like a dip every time you attacked. Uh, the first part of the game where you have fancy flips, which you never have in any other part of the game. Oh no, it's the cutscene where you get turned into a Deku. It does have a few dips here and there. More so than Ocarina of Time did. But... Oh, so I'd say that glitching out, texture-wise. I would still have to say that the, the entire thing was good overall. Wind Waker had some issues. Ocarina of Time was mostly fine. This has had some dips. But then The Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2 were perfect, so... If I was to take into account the average, then it would be playable, but I think I would still just say playable with issues. But it's, you know, it's a cool option for being able to play Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. And also, you know, Zelda 1 and 2. But I definitely think both versions on the GameCube have some things missing. Like textures, like the textures are very iffy, but even still. By the way, I think that'll mark the end of this test. And I would have to say that the, Ze uh, the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition is playable. All playable with issues. Let's be real. That's going to be the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, leave suggestions for games you want to see. And until next time, take care.